It's such an incredible story that Hollywood told it. In this movie, Fly Away Home, it's based on the work of a Canadian team that teaches geese to follow an ultra ultralight airplane and eventually follow new and safer migratory routes. The movie's now come and gone from theaters, but the work continues. The team, called Operation Migration, has been so successful with geese, it now hopes to use ultralights to train different birds and save them from the verge of extinction. The process is long and hard and full of setbacks. Over the next month, we'll be bringing you a number of stories as we check in with Operation Migration. We'll update you on their efforts to teach a new bird some old tricks. The day starts early. You must rise before the wind. Its whimsical gusts have become an enemy of Operation Migration and of the flock of birds learning to follow a new leader. You should release them. I'll release the birds. Yeah. Okay, and then... And then I'll just duck back in the pen. Can you hide in that pen? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Behind the plastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but rather than, if you get them on you, I think it's really important, rather than just doing a circle, what they're so conditioned to do circles back to home, if you can just take them straight for a while and then turn around and come back, even yeah. if you just do a straight line. Well, I, I know, I know. It, it, if, if I get them on the wing, I'll, I'll take them somewhere. Yeah, yeah. 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 These sandhill cranes are three months old, young and impressionable. After six weeks, they've learned to follow the aircraft, but just barely. The problem is, they circle their pen and then land. And that's not nearly long enough if the eventual goal is to follow the plane all the way to Virginia. Uh, behind you and to your uh, right. This morning, Bill Lishman flies the ultralight. His helmet blocks his side vision, so he relies constantly on his partner, Joe Duff, for radio directions. You got them jumping. If you do a circuit around, though, you might get them. They're going, they're going. We got them. They're still going. You got a visual on them? Yeah. So far, so good. But if only the birds could break the habit of circling their pen. They're on you. They're still on you. They're on the left wing. Okay, I'm headed, I'm headed out for a bit. Roger that. One minute out, then one minute back. Looks These nice, days are great. marked by small victories. This is a milestone. This is the first time they've followed this well, and it's been six weeks they've been here. <sighs> we thought that it wasn't going to work. We and the really hopes are high that this project work. does work. Teaching sandhill cranes to follow the plane's path could be the saving grace for the whooping crane. This healthy flock of whooping cranes lives all year round in Florida. But of the whooping cranes that live in Canada and migrate south each winter, there are only about 155 left in the wild. One oil spill or run-in with disease could wipe the entire flock from the face of the earth. Well, the sandhill cranes really aren't in need of a migration route, but they're close cousins of the whooping crane, and that's the one that's most endangered. Uh, and and uh, there's, there's a big move to try and establish a secondary flock of migratory whooping cranes. Uh, and the only way that it's possible is to show them that route. And so if we can do this with sandhill cranes, probably most of the things we learn from them will be applicable to the whooping crane. You got them nice, though. They're right on you. There's no way you Lishman follow, could teach the existing Perfect. adult whooping cranes new migratory routes. But if today's flight is any indication, it may be possible to teach baby cranes. If a new flock could travel to a new location, then Operation Migration will have doubled the whooping crane's chance of survival. The question is, why did the cranes follow the plane so well today? It could be because three days ago, Lishman and Duff took a hard line with the birds, separating these three from the rest of their flock and bringing them to a new pen. Oh, it, it works today uh, basically because uh, we have a big open field. We have no home pen. It's not familiar ground with for them. The only thing they're familiar with is the pilot and the aircraft, and it's leaving, so they follow it. 
cut to the inside, bro. Cut to the inside. We're gonna come home. The grace and precision looks effortless, seamless, as if it were made for yet another Hollywood movie. Yeah, but no, flying the aircraft demands non-stop concentration. You see, when he keeps dropping, he's actually stalling the airplane. Because the birds are still rather slow, Lishman must stall the ultralight, not the safest thing to do, in order to hang back and keep close to the birds. Yeah, you got them on the wing now. They start to actually float on the wing. Lishman has mastered the art of right flying the with two, geese, two but this you. is a whole new ball game, so to speak. Cranes are different right animals behind. with different patterns for him to learn. If you're thinking of aircraft, uh, a Cessna is a conventional airplane, and uh, a, a goose is like a Cessna, and a crane is, is like a sailplane. Uh, they ride thermals, and, and they get altitude, and, and they, they, they know how to take advantage of uh, uh, the air much more than geese. Geese are wing flappers, they're working all the time, whereas cranes are trying to soar all the time. Good guys. Good guys. Back on the ground, dressed in a rudimentary crane costume, Joe Duff greets the aircraft. Anyone who gets close to the cranes must be outfitted, including our Discovery cameraman. It's all a part of helping the birds survive. Cranes in particular are very territorial, and uh, we want these birds, when, once we do this with uh, whooping cranes, to uh, you know, occupy their normal wild territories. And if they get imprinted on humans, regular humans, then they may uh, try and nest in shopping malls or wherever humans are. And, and of course, uh, there's a danger to humans because the cranes will try and drive off people because they, they, they relate to people. So the thing is to, it's not so much dressing like a crane, but masking yourself from being human. It'd be interesting to know what the cranes think of the big funny bird with the beard and the noisy propeller. Truth is, he's as familiar as the next crane. The trick to all of this is that the birds don't yeah, know anything else. When they're in the egg, you play the tape recording of the engine noise to them, and uh, as they grow, you, you, we have a little mock-up airplane first, and then uh, as they get older, we introduce them to the real airplane, and we taxi with it, and they go we'll walk, and you feed them from it, and et cetera, et cetera. So they, they get used to the sound and the shape of it, and uh, so it's just part of their family. Perfect. Here, you can blow the whistle. You get the whistle. 